All right, welcome to top five series, spotlight series week four on the Borg. We have two big heavy hitting Borg players today. We've got Neil Matthew uh, for our first edition and Barry Winshittle talk, telling us about his second edition top five for Borg. So, hey guys, thanks so much for coming out today. You're welcome. Glad to be here. All right, so as usual, we'll go ahead and I'm going to start with Neil because uh, first edition has one in it, you know, first in its name. So Neil, tell us a little bit about your top five Borg cards for first edition. All right. Um, after playing a kajillion, bajillion, bajillion Borg decks and all different types of Borg decks, um, in... No, no particular order. The first one that pops into my head is one that's only surfacing recently. I've noticed that it's starting to appear a lot now, uh, thankfully. It's the Borg Scout Vessel. Um, a, um, when you report it, it, you can report with crew, so unlimited personnel, unlimited equipment as you play it from your hand. Um, B, it lands. It reports in the Alpha Quadrant. Um, Hugh can boost its attributes, uh, third of five. And again, as it lands, it's immune to God. Uh, one of the tough dilemmas out there, it can't be attacked if it's land landed. So if you're assimilating Homeworld, it's the go-to ship by far. Um, Next one is um, Transport Pub. Um, that's another one. I don't use it in all of my decks, but if I'm using um, a double Delta Quadrant Outpost deck, then it's definitely one to use. Um, it basically gives you instant access to the Alpha Quadrant, so it's a good way to start off your Alpha Quadrant objectives. Um, next one would be um, stop first contact, um, that's objective because uh, not only do you get 40 points, not only can you double your points on your subsequent objective with population 9 billion or Borg, the best thing about it is if your opponent is playing Federation or Starfleet and you complete the objective and they're not at time location, then they all get wiped out. Uh, they don't even go in the discard pile. They all get placed out of play, even all the cards in the discard pile. Um, yeah, it particularly hurts uh, TNG fed deck. And um, from what I've noticed, um, Delta Quadrant Equinox decks, because um, even though they're in non-aligned mode, um, the Equinox uh, dual affiliation personnel uh, still count because they still have the icon on the card. So they ain't safe. Wow. Yeah, oh, yes. it's you, I I I gotta say I, I did play Borg quite a bit when I was a much more active first edition player, but I was I don't think I was ever even old enough to do population nine billion all Borg because um, my roommate hated playing against Borg, so I was nice and I knew that if I wanted her <laughs> to play with me. <laughs> that I needed to that I needed to be nice. Yeah. yeah, the 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 current meta is in the current meta. Um there's a lot of time locations that get used recently, so um there's a good chance that the Federation or Starfleet opponent will have a chance to hide at a time location uh once the uh the probe is triggered. I haven't actually seen it yet, so that, that's a hint. You might expect one or two more Borg decks from me recently. <laughs> I haven't played in a while. Um, next one has got to be, I've got to mention a Borg Queen, but it's got to be the, the very first one, the one from First Contact. Um, obviously, the select a skill option, everyone will go for empathy these days uh, to bust through quantum incursions. But the... Um, Obviously, our main skill is to download a Borg drone or a change of plans in place of card draw. Um, back in the day when uh, General Quarters came out, uh, the personnel download limiter, um, 
there was a lot of hoo-ha about it hurting Borg and not being able, only being able to download one drone into play per turn. Um, as it so happened, it didn't really hurt them that much uh, because the Borg player can still download them to hand if it's in place of card draw. Yeah, I think I remember her download of a change of plans necessitated the change of the downloading rules. The downloads go into play instead of into hand. I sort of remember that being associated with that, but it's been so long now I can't remember. Um, I can't remember exactly when when that happened. I just, I just remember looking it up in the rules one day uh, back when I started playing Borg again in the CC era that you could, in place of a card draw, uh, you could place the card to hand instead. So I was like, woo! Nice. Yeah, and um, I, I do have a story about Borg Queen. Um, I don't know how many people out there know this, but the first contact packs came in a particular order. So if you ever came across, if you come across a box of first contact, if you know what the first three cards are on the left-hand side, if you buy those first three packs and see what the rares are, you know what the rest of the box is. At least a friend of mine would do this. And he would go box to a store. Mapping. Yes, he would box map. And he would buy the first three packs when he'd come to a store. And then from there would go, oh, is there, there's a queen in this box or not? And he would buy. He he would let the he would get the store owner to let him pick out the the packs that he wanted. He he had something like a hundred oh, more queens. I mean, insanity, <laughs> insanity. It's a fix. He he also came out. Of, he almost wow. came. He also came out of college making an obscene amount of money and had no, you know, nothing nothing to spend it on. So I, he had like twelve yeah, magical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last, last one, Neil, and we'll move on to Barry's 2E stuff. Sorry, okay, so the last one is a uh, Borg drone. Um, it's not seven of nine, it's in fact um, three of nine. Um, three, uh, seven of nine, she is a good one, but um, her um, card draw action is only at the start of the turn. Three of nine's card draw action. Uh, you can place a card beneath the deck to draw a card. Um, that, happen, that can happen any time during the turn, um, which is really important because that can get you out of um, uh, tough spots or walls by, uh, say if you hit a wall when you're scouting and you need a particular skill. So midway through the turn, you can place a card beneath the deck to draw a card with three of nine and then use the board clean first contact. Uh, to oh, yeah. up. Nice. Very powerful. All I right. think I remember some of this stuff during the one or two times I actually played Borg and Winnie. All right, well, thank There's you, Neil. There. Oh, so go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry. I just want to share a little trick that I came up with on the spot as well. Um, a little combination that I was using during a, a simulation deck. Um, to board an opponent's ship and to stop them from space time Portland, uh, what I'd done was I moved my Borg ship up to the ship's location, and my next action was um, using three of nines, um, place a card beneath the deck, draw a card. I also had the Borg twins as part of the crew. And I had Commodore ship um, in play. So if I had an um, intruder on their ship, they wouldn't be able to return the ship to hand. Obviously, at this point, there's no personnel on their ship, so they had the option to return the ship to hand. Uh, they let me do the three of nine um, place card beneath the deck draw card. However, halfway through that, before I drew the card, I special downloaded maturation chamber um, onto the, the opponent's ship. So by now they're not able, by this time they've got to wait until I finish the three of nine action. So in place of the card draw on the maturation chamber, which I just downloaded, I used that to download the board drone directly onto their ship. 
it's, it's fun the kind of things you can come up with on the spot. <laughs> oh my god, that's 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 insane. <laughs> So I'm looking at all these I'm looking at all these cards while you're while you're describing this going whoa it took a lot of game, it took a lot of practice and a lot of games to figure out all the tricks but very cool very cool okay. all right well Barry tell us about your top five second edition board cards well I kind of just came up with this on the fly because I haven't done one of these before, so I was coming in a bit unprepared. But um, <clears throat> pretty much I'm coming at this from the viewpoint of someone who's played a lot of assimilation, alpha quadrant-based assimilation. You know, you can ask some of my fellow local players about that. Or some, you know, maybe Corbett, too. Yeah. Um, but looking at it from that perspective, you know, top top five... Uh, I mean, one of the top five cards I'd be looking at would be Annexation Drone. I mean, now when you're playing all Alpha Quadrant missions, it's going to get you an easy five points. You can use that for several different things. I've, a lot of times, you know, I try to not burn it right away, use it for a, to play a Reborn earlier than I normally could. Otherwise, you could use it for at what cost to get the extra counters to, Spew out some more drones or other cards, support cards. My buddy and Eric likes to uh, pair it with uh, "You've Always Been My Favorite," and then draw out for twenty-one counters in one turn. Oh yeah, uh, Kevin Yeager. I've seen him a lot of times when I play against him, and he's running assimilation. That's the primary thing he uses it for. It's like I haven't. I I did that for a little bit, but I didn't really warm up to it. I guess I'm. I'm probably the more impatient type of person. It's like, I got five points, you know, maybe I'll, I got now a cost in hand. So I'm going to do that. You know, I don't want to risk somebody blowing up my event and losing cards off of it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a big thing that I was always afraid of with that one, whenever I play it. But otherwise moving on. Um, I was going to say three of nine as another top, top five card. She's pretty good for, recycling your stuff out of the di out of the discard pile. I haven't played with her in a deck since she got errated, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I mean, it was a big thing when I played the more glass cannon type of simulator where it was just recycling stuff like crazy in order to keep hitting the opponent with reborns and whatnot. But, I mean, usually playing older simulators I had that were more abductions, that type of thing. I didn't I think always have still, an empty deck. Oh. I think she'll still be pretty powerful. It's basically just to, the errata, if I recall correctly, was just to keep her from uh, infinite looping. Yeah, it's pretty much after the errata, you have to discard cards as part of the cost. Whereas before, I could have, you know, three, two, one, no cards in my draw deck, and then just put her to the bottom, discard her, and then get four cards back, including her. I mean, there's some matchups that that's going to definitely hurt the Borg. You know, one case in point was playing against uh, Neil Timmons in Continentals of 14. You know, I was able to use her to keep him from decking me out. And it wasn't until I kind of mistakenly uh, answered him when he asked what card that was after I used her. You know, I said, I'm going to use three of nine, put her in a deck. And then, you know, he asked me what which card I used. I I talked to Jeremy Benedict after he said, well, you technically already gave the information. You didn't really have to do that, but it's kind of one of those things that if, if I wouldn't have did that, he wouldn't have been able to carry her to my hand and then force me to discard her. And I could have kept the game going long enough to get enough points to beat him. But like I said, I'm going to, if I play a simulator next time, I'm going to go back to a more classic one with, you know, abduction stuff. It's not going to be all interrupt based. And I'd imagine she's still going to be a pretty good part of the deck for that. But, you know, um, moving on, since we're keeping on the assimilation type of bid here, we have another card that was recently added, Knowledge and Experience. That's always, you know, since that one came out and I started playing Assimilator, I mean, that was a big part of the deck. You know, it's just one of those things you can... 
you could either just, if you have enough bonus points, just keep on recycling them, just keep on spending the five points to nerf your opponent's dilemmas. Yeah, but knowledge now knowledge and experience is an uh, interrupt yep. that lets you prevent and overcome dilemmas. And the errata yep. uh, placed it out of play to keep people from uh, to keep people from bringing it back from the dead. And it puts it in line with the rest of the prevent and overcome stuff. Sorry, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I should probably explain that a little better. Like I said, first time doing one of these. But yeah, I haven't tried a Borg assimilation deck since that was a rat, but I mean, it's one of those things I would kind of hold back on those if possible. You know, I'd like to keep enough bonus points to try to get a two mission win without having to go another turn to play in another one with the Borg or something. But it's one of those things, I mean, I'm going to have three of them per game. So now I'm looking at other options, you know, assimilated transport, for, you know, that's one you can kill six personnel that you command but do not own or right, you simulate from your opponent to put three dilemmas off their dilemma pile beneath the mission that it's at. You know, I'm looking at that as a possibility. You know, something that can try to keep it to a two-mission win type of deal. It's one of those things I'm going to try to get it put back together, maybe take it to, you know, take it to a league gig or two or regionals next year. But... It's one of those things I'm just waiting to see on it. I was a bit salty when it got errated, but, you know, that's kind of my little knee-jerk reaction because it's my my big deck yep. that I play. Um, Maki, can, can we get that card, like, um, converted word for word for one -y? <laughs> What, knowledge and experience? <laughs> Oh, yes, hey, I, I, I have nothing. I have no power there. You have to talk to Charlie about that one. Is it? Is that even one? Is oh, it? That even backwards, is that backwards compatible? Oh no, oh. it is not. Oh, oh okay. okay. Not money. Borg don't care oh, about. Oh gosh, them. that would have been a so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got for me, Barry? Well, next up. This is kind of one that I thought went hand in hand with knowledge and experience. You could you could use this in a non-assimilator deck to enable yourself to get a use or two out of KE. But Wolf 359, assimilate resistance. So on that uh, when you when you complete it, you can search your opponent's discard pile and take a person out of it and take command of that person. You know, pretty much you put them aboard your ship that's at that mission, solving, completing the mission, and then you take that person, put them on your ship, and now you've essentially assimilated them. You now command them. It's it's one of those ones, again, you know, when it got spoiled, you know, the potential was definitely something that people saw. And, like, even in a Borg Alpha Quadrant, sol Alpha Quadrant solver, you know, it's one of those missions they're likely going to have. You know, even just to get an extra body to throw at dilemmas and whatnot. But, I mean, with this, it it essentially can allow you to splash in knowledge and experience. You know, if you have missions with the right up, right point value or even some other way to get extra bonus points, then it, it opens up that option for you. And not to mention the fact that looking at it, it has one range, one span of range on it. So that's really good for moving between there and your unit complex, especially if you can't draw into your sphere 634 to get the range discount or span discount. But, but um, otherwise, let's see. So last one then. Moving on. Yeah, this one. It's kind of a tough one. I mean, I have a few different cards I'd like to put in that last top five spot. I think I might just have to go with since, you know, I just mentioned it in terms of getting back and forth to, between your unit complex and Alpha Quadrant missions, Sphere 634. I mean, that's another car that was really helpful for Alpha Quadrant Borg solvers. Essentially, it's a six-cost sphere. You have nine range on it. When, you, when this ship is about to move between an Alpha Quadrant mission and Delta Quadrant mission, do not add two to the total span of those missions. So essentially, you, you don't have to add the extra two span for moving between quadrants. And that's one of those things that can allow you to 
make a round trip to your unit complex and back to your mission if you need to get reinforcements. Yep, that's always and that's always a I tough just, thing when you're playing between quadrants. Yeah, and that's one of those things, you know, especially border susceptible to a, a few choice dilemmas out there that that really can cause them headaches. So, you know, you might need to get that. You might not have the range to get a person after you lose them to a mission attempt or something, but, you know, at least next turn. If, you know, if you're at a plan of mission or if you're at Wolf 359, you can fly back, you know, report them to the complex, fly back, get them. And, you know, especially if you don't have to worry about getting to another mission after that, then, yeah, definitely helps out. I mean, there are other Borg that can boost the range on your ship, but it's always a little bit of extra security in such a situation. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, any other uh, last minute comments from either you guys on your top five, talking about favorite things about Borg? Barry, we were talking about imperfect replacement as a nice support card for assimilation before we went on air. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, that's the one that gives you extra counters for having... Uh, no, that you're you're thinking of uh, a perfect tool. Oh! The one oh, with Jordy oh. on it when he's getting tortured. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, another I'm... good one for uh, for Borg assimilation. But the one I was... Yeah, the imperfect replacement, that's the one that it's a one cost event. It's non unique, so you can always play multiples of it in order to make sure your opponent just can't nerf it out of your core and and you know, take the heat off himself. It's one that you play in your core. While you command a personnel you do not own, the player who owns that personnel cannot play a personnel with the same card title. That's right. And that's one that I've played that whenever I take an assimilator to a high-level tournament, tournament, regionals, nationals, whatever, or continentals. I haven't actually played the nationals yet. But that's one I'll throw in there just because I get that out. You know, I'm taking my person's Ben Cisco or John Luke Picard, you know, or their other heavy hitter personnel, and even, even a non-unique person. I mean, this doesn't specify. It has to be a unique personnel that – I that I do not own, that I command but do not own. So you could take like their commas and if they don't have other one, they don't have another one out for like a non unique, they can't play anymore. Nice. So you're not just taking, you know, six personnel when you go and assimilate six off their ship. You could be knocking them down, you know, 10, 12 plus people that they can no longer have access to until they either kill them, you know, kill them out of from your command or get rid of the imperfect replacements. All right. Well, hey, Neil, anything else from you? Uh, yeah, just uh, like an another uh, crazy trick um, for you all. It involves the it involves memory wipe. Uh, so if we look up memory wipe, we search engine. That's just at the top. Um, Uh, here we go. Memory wipe. Um, plays on a non Borg ship. Ship crew and ship away teams lose affiliation and become non aligned. That's very important for a particular card in the Voyager set, uh, the Case on Collective, <laughs> which uh, specifically states that your Case on affiliation is immune to assimilation. Ah, so, yup. <laughs> uh, a memory might be based on shit, and they're all yours for the taking. <laughs> nice. I never would have thought of that. That is brilliant. <laughs> That's good. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today to give me your top five Borg affiliation related cards. It was great talking to both of you guys. Yeah, great talking to you. Great speaking to you. And great seeing you last weekend. Yes, yeah, yes it was fantastic seeing you at Worlds. I have awesome pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to uh, cut us off here. Thanks guys, and we will see you guys next time for top 5 Fed DS9 week.